Wash your hands. Avoid sick people and touching your face. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. Brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. The views and opinions expressed by the host and DJs do not necessarily state or reflect those of WOTG Network and its management. Furthermore, the views and opinions of the guests and singers do not reflect the host, the show, the management, and the WOTG Network, WOTG Radio, and WOTG TV. So thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for some amazing programs. My life in him, I got so much to thank him for. And I've got so much to thank him for. Let's make some noise, let's make some noise, and sing praises to the King. Let's make some noise, let's make some noise, until the heavens ring. Jesus died to save us, and He rose in victory. Let's make some noise, let's make some noise, for the King of Kings. went to prepare by his own hands and for the saved by grace there is this resting place and in just a few more days it's gonna be mine and some calls it heaven Oh, but I call it home And some calls it dreaming Well, just let me dream on And some calls it paradise Somewhere beyond the sky some calls it heaven, oh, but I call it home. Someone said you can't go back home again. Well, things will not ever be. As good as they've been Oh, but I've got good news for you Oh, when heaven comes into view Well, just one glimpse and you will know Oh, the best is yet to come And some calls it heaven but I call it home And some calls it dreaming Well, just let me dream on And some calls it paradise Somewhere beyond the sky
Buchanan. You can find me on the web at johnnybuchananministry.org. I'm going to be talking for about 15 minutes on endurance, faithfulness, discipline, all those words that we really we find difficult to try to listen to or to be ministered to, but it's it's very important that, that we that we be that way. Um because there's a race to run and I believe that I believe it's about over. I really do. And I believe we as Christians should rally around each other, encourage one another to go on and finish the race. The Bible says that he that endures to the end shall be saved. So we need to have endurance as well. We need to be committed to finish. But, you know, we can feel burned out, we can feel washed out, and feel hung out to dry. I'm not saying that I don't feel that way sometime myself. But if you say you are just burned out and that's all you talk about, well, maybe at least it tells me that once you were lit. But some of us need our, as I used to say a lot, our faithometer turned up. God's Word will do just that. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So we cannot expect to uh, feel strength in the fire of God if we talk about how burned out we are and we do not engage in spiritual conversation with God and uh, get into His Word. You know, I know my life because I, I know me. I have had... Uh, I have had parades of battles and struggles, and they have produced incredible miracles. It is not where you start, but where you finish that counts. I know from the ashes of defeat can burn the greatest fires of accomplishment. I have said that for many, many years, and I probably will keep on saying it. But we need to be committed. Committed to what? Committed to Christ, committed to obey what he tells us to do. Be committed to be faithful. There's a lot of courses and literature available on motivation and to get started and how to be creative and spark initiative. But let me tell you some, something. But let's hear it for the opposite end of, for our change. Let's extol the virtues of sticking with something until it is done, on hanging in there when things get rough and when the excitement and fun fade into discipline and guts. I know when I was a young girl at 24 years old, and I was told, my husband and I were told that we had a child that had some disabilities, I knew that I couldn't quit. I knew I had to keep going. And down through time, it has been, we've had some difficult times, not just that, God seems to help us through that so much. But there's always something that the enemy tries to put in our path to discourage us and keep us from going. And that lets me know that God has a great plan for me if I'll just stay with uh, and be faithful to what he's called me to do. So many, you know, many Christians, and I heard a minister say this years ago, and he said they start like a lightning flash. But how many people do you know in latter life who are finishing the course with sustained, let me say that word, with sustained enthusiasm and vigor? We run out of strength, you know, and the older we get, and I, I'm 69 years old, and I'm telling you, the strength that, that I get is from my Lord. It's not from a pill. It's not from other people. They encourage you, yes, but if I really want strength and, and vigor and, and excitement in my life, I have to go to the Word of God. And it will, it energizes you. It really does. God's Holy Spirit energizes you and helps you. And God's Holy Spirit will use people. He will use things to help us to, to run the race. He really will. So as we think about the race, let's, let's look at a scripture that I, that I really like. And it is in, let me see where I can, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race they all run. This is what Paul said, but only one receives the prize. So run in such a way that you may win. And everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. You know, God wants that out of us. If we run the race with with uh, self-control and discipline, that's helping us. That's ex- exercising our spiritual muscles. Therefore, Paul says, I run in such a way as not without 
aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air. In other words, I'm doing something. I'm going somewhere. I have a purpose. But he says this, I buffet my body and I make it my slave. Least possibly after I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. You know, Paul was always fascinated by the picture of the athlete. At, uh, an athlete must he must train with uh, intensity if he is to win the contest. And in Corinth, uh, reading about that, there were contests there, and there were the is. Let me say if it, if I'm saying this right, the Isthmian Games, second only to the Olympic Games, we're told. And furthermore, the athlete undergoes this self discipline and this training to win a crown um and how much more listen when i just saw that how much more should the christian discipline himself with crowns to win the crowns which is eternal life life is a battle of course it is it's not always always as we've heard or people say it's not a bed of roses there is much discipline the word, the Lord says, if you abide in me, my words abide in you, you should ask what you want. I mean, there is, God wants us to complete the course by listening to what, he, listening to what he has to say and obeying him. Just like exercise builds muscles, so does spiritual discipline. It makes spiritual character. So for the moment, it can be painful. But the results are rewarding. You talk to a person who's very disciplined in in exercise and, and trying to take care of their body, their physical body, they will tell you that that it is a race to run. It really is, even in the physical, because you've got to stay with it. So I know personally I need to do more physical exercise. But even above that, what saddens me is people will exercise their body, which is great, and take care of the outside of their body, but they leave their physical body, their spiritual body untouched, and it's not been exercised. How do I exercise it? By reading the Word of God, by obeying the Word of God, by doing what the Lord says, by staying in fellowship and communion with Him, communion with Him, and knowing that the Holy Spirit is the one that directs our path and gives us direction and tells us what to do. So Paul went on to say, you know, press on. Just press on. Forget what's behind and keep on going and doing what is right. Let people say about us, we've been faithful. We were faithful unto death. Everyone enjoys the race for the excitement, the thrill of crossing the finish line. And I want to say this. I want to remind you that the joy of receiving the prize is exciting. And I wanted to talk about the five crowns today, but I should have had a 30-minute program to do that because there are crowns that will be given to us. But we see in Revelation that those crowns are going to be cast down at Jesus' feet because actually he's the one that gives us the strength to be able to do whatever he tells us to do. He never asks us to do something that he, that he does not give us give us the power and the strength to do it. So there are five crowns, and hopefully I can get to them, but it's the incorruptible crown. It's the crown of rejoicing, the Bible says. It's the crown of righteousness, the crown of life, and the crown of glory. And if I don't get to, to those, perhaps in the next program I will do that. But uh, the Christian life is not a sprint. I wanted to remind you of this, that I'm, that's not what I'm saying. Nor is it a stroll through the park. Rather, the New Testament says, run with endurance the race which you set before us. God has set a race before you and me. The race is a marathon. And what is needed is more, is mere speed. It, we don't just need speed. We need endurance. Endurance. Put that word on your mirror. Put that word around faithfulness, endurance, those words that we need to be reminded of, obedience. So as believers in Christ, we live in a world that is against Christ, don't we? There is a tide, even a flood, of sin and encumbrances that is keeping us from running. In the New Testament, it tells us that. Unforgiving sins, anxieties of life, and the deceitfulness of fame and wealth 
wears down. All those little things, all the little foxes that spoil the vine and, and, and keep us from from the goal that's ahead. I mean, God has great things for us, and, and the enemy will park little stones because it says, you know, it's the foxes, that, little foxes that spoil the vine. He put those little things in front of us, and we trip over them, and we get all messed up with those things instead of looking beyond and seeing the, the goal ahead for us. So as living in this world, friends, we're not in a vacuum. We're not supposed to be. So what do we do? How do we stand against the flood of disillusionists and all those things that come against us? Where do we find the endurance to press on when we feel that uh, we're drained and we have no more energy? Well, Hebrews 12 tells us how to run the race. Look that up. I know some of you know what, what it is and read it. Though we live in an age with many encumbrances and distractions, takes us away from the Lord, doesn't it? And our secret is to look unto Jesus. When our sight is filled with this wonderful, wonderful Savior, everything else, everything else pales in comparison. No one can pair with him. Compare with him, he is the magnet that draws us away from all other things so that we can look to him. Look unto Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. As Christian students, listen. Listen, we need to enjoy looking unto Jesus. We find him in the word because the Bible is full of Christ, Luke twenty four twenty seven. His word becomes our food, Matthew 4, 4, and our strength, even the joy and rejoicing of our heart in Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Furthermore, there is a real strength. I mean a real strength and a supply in running with other believers. The race is not to be run individually. Rather, the New Testament strongly proclaims, flee youthful lust and pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a, listen, a pure heart. That is, that is in Second Timothy 2, 22. So the race of faith is on. It's about completed. And I just want to be a voice to say you can make it. Don't say you can't. Don't say you are a victim. You are a victor. You can be victorious. I can be victorious in the Lord. I need words from and strength from my brothers and sisters to help me go on in the race. And I had that so many times, and I thank God for it. So it says, Hebrews 12, 1 and 3. I love this, and I keep it before me a lot. Therefore, we all, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your own soul. That's the very trick of the enemy to discourage you in your very in your very inner man and then let and you just lay down and say, I can't make it. You can make it. I'm here to tell you that you can. We can, I can, we can make it. So when when you're feeling that way Go somewhere where you can get some encouragement and strength and not around someone that will just pull you down and laugh at you and make fun of you and, you know, even your age. You know, you're getting old and all that. Who wants to hear that? We want to hear that, 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 that we're loved and we're cared for and that we're, they're thankful that we're in their life and we want to be the kind of person that they will be thankful that we are in their life. So much to say. I want to talk about the crowns next time, the five crowns that is in the Word of God, and hopefully we can do that. Sometimes with these 15-minute programs, I I talk so fast, I think my tongue gets a little twisted. But uh, I want to get so much in, and I have such little time to do it. So God loves you today with an everlasting love. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever think that you're alone in this world and that you have no one to help you. He is only a prayer away. Stop letting the devil deceive.
receive you. God loves you. He loves me. Have a blessed evening. Have a blessed tomorrow. And go with God because he goes with you. He loves you. He really does. God's children too low have been burdened And their longing for heaven's green shore Where heartaches are left for behind them And burdens Carry no more. Come morning, I'll walk by the Sometimes I'm despised and rejected And I question, oh Father, how long Then I take one more look at Mount Calvary And it gives me to go Or listen with your ears 
Just cry out to God, He is always near. In your darkest hour, your miracle is here. Oh, don't give up on the brink of a miracle. Oh, don't give up. God is still on His throne. Oh, don't give up on the brink of Sends all those trials to confound you. He lies and says this time, there's no way you can find to make it through. Just remember God's true word. The battle is the Lord's. Don't give up to fear. Think on things that appear and praise the Lord. You miracle is here. On the brink of a miracle, oh, don't give up, God is still on His throne. Oh, don't give up, on the brink of a miracle, oh, don't give up, remember your been listening to Besides Still Waters with Joni Buchanan. Joni's radio ministry is made possible through support from listeners, and she wants to say thank you to everyone who helps her keep it going. You can find out more about Joni and her ministry at JoniBuchanan.org or connect with Joni Buchanan on Facebook and Twitter. We hope you will join us again next time for another edition of Besides Still Waters. Thank you, and God bless you.